Welcome, my friends, to Winslow United Church on beautiful Prince Edward Island. Thanks so much for tuning in and making us part of your worship experience for this week. Now, folks, I remember a few years back I asked our Sunday school kids why we have Mother's Day. And when I did, young Aiden Smith, you know, he put up his hand and he said, Reverend J.D., I know. And I said, yes. He said, because every day is kids' day. And I have to say, it's not wrong. Even before her child is born, a woman becomes a mother. Even before her child is born, she begins to love them, care for them. She begins preparing a place for them, so that when they come into this world, they feel like they're welcomed. They feel like they belong. When that child is born, a mother will often put her needs on hold and put their needs ahead of her own often sacrificing their dreams to help fulfill the dreams of her child. She is our caregiver, our teacher, our friend, our God, our nurse. She's our greatest cheerleader, and she's our greatest protector. She is the one constant in our ever-changing world. And my friends, if you haven't guessed, today at Winslow United Church, we will thank the good Lord for our greatest gift, the greatest gift that he gave us, our mothers. So, you're here, I'm here, the church is here, so let's go praise the Lord. Of the, of the all the sequels. Twelve oh, hours. Yeah. That's great. Me and you. No, not me and you. No, no. I, I they only had two tickets left, so I only I could get only get two tickets. Well, that's one for me and you. No, no. You and Faith could go. Faith's already in the car. Oh. Yep. What? What? Should I get dressed? No, no. I already put your uh, put your clothes, your your pants, and your wallet. They're all in the car. In the car. Right? Faith's already got the keys. Well, well what about breakfast? I already had breakfast. Just finishing up. Oh. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay, you gotta go. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. superhero. My mom is a super mom. Happy Mother's Day. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the very beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made, and in him was life. And that life was the light to all mankind, and that light, it shone in the darkness. And the darkness has no overcome. So my friends, on this day, as the light of Christ begins to shine to dispel our darkness, so let the word of God echo forth for all here assembled to hear. Live a life that is filled with love for others. And then the people of God will say together, Amen. My friends, on this Mother's Day, we acknowledge that our mothers are quite often the caring heart, the loving heart, the beating heart of our families. They are the glue that hold most families together. And so on this day, 
Let us bow our minds and hearts just for a quick moment in prayer as we pray for our mothers, for our homes, and for our families. In you, O oh God, every family on earth receives its name. Brighten the homes of this earth with your love. And please, I ask that you grant courage to those who are hurt and lonely. I ask that you grant endurance to those who, who care for sick family members. And I ask you that you grant wisdom to those who are living in fearful and changing times. On this day, O oh Lord, we thank you for the gifts of love from our mothers. As we have been loved by you, as we have been loved by our mothers, so we may love each other. Grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. first day of the week, as we begin our journey from this week to the next, the good Lord has said, come to me, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your soul. My friends, on this day, on the first day of the week, let us lay our burdens down at the foot of the cross so we may walk the straight and narrow path, the path that the good Lord is guiding us to. So on this day, on this Mother's Day, let us become, let us come before our Father in heaven and let us pray together. Lord Jesus, I need your help today. I want to care for those who you've sent into my life to help them develop the special gifts that you've given them. But Lord, I also want to free them to follow their own paths and to bring their loving wisdom to this world. Help me to embrace them without clutching, to support them without suffocating, and to correct them without crushing. And Lord, help me to live joyfully and pray for me, myself, so they can see your life in me and find their way to you. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Mother's Day ABCs, reasons why I love you. A. You're amazing. B. You're beautiful. C. You're a good cook. D. Delightful. E. Enthusiastic. F. Fantastic. G. Grateful. H. Helpful. I. Incredible. 
J. Joyful. K. Crafty. L. Lovable. M. Mother. N. Nice. O. Oh dear. P. Pretty. Q. Quite the mother. R. Really good cook. S. Stupendous. T. Terrific. U. Useful. V. Very good cook. W. Weird. X. Extra good cook. Y. Yellow. Z. I have no clue. Happy Mother's Day. Well, folks, I just got a little story for you here today. Just a little one. Now, folks, when I was growing up, my grandmother was the most important person in my life. I loved her the very best, and I spent all kinds of my time with her. Now, our grandmother, and she was a member of the Christmas Savings Club. Now, I don't know if you guys you know, have that around here or had that around here, but what it was was that once a week, the ladies of the community would they get together at someone's home, and they'd laugh, and they'd gossip, and they'd play games like, say, Ramoli or Pacino or, or Scat, you know, this kind of stuff. They'd have a grand old time. They'd also pay their dues. And that money went into the club, and in December, they get all that money back so they would have a tidy sum to help make Christmas special. Also, at the end of each evening, they'd have a lunch. There'd be sandwiches and sweets and cookies and squares, you know, that kind of thing. And no matter where it was at, no matter what the weather was like, when my grandmother came home from that club, she always brought me home a plate of goodies. She never forgot me. I was staying up late waiting for her to come home, and you know, sometimes I just couldn't stay awake and I'd fall asleep in the easy chair. But when I would wake up, there was always a plate of goodies waiting for me. And at Christmas time, there was always something very special under the tree. Now, when I went away to university, it was a very busy time. I was always studying, always hustling, and money was tight. But once a month, a care package would come from my grandmother. Now in that package, there was usually homemade soup, there was some baked goods, you know, sometimes there was a bun of bread that she'd bake. There was a package of fudge, there was always fudge. And there was always an envelope with a bunch of $2 bills inside that she got from selling her baking to other people. No matter what was going on, she never forgot me. No matter what was going on, every month a package would come. You know what? I couldn't wait to get home to see her at Christmas time. And when I did, there was always goodies. And there was always a gift under the tree. Now folks, the only trouble with grandmothers is that they get old, even as we get older. In my last year of university, my grandmother was diagnosed with cancer. Treatments were given. Procedures were done, but it was not enough. And in late October, my grandmother died of cancer. And for the very first time, no packages came. For the very first time, during Coach's Corner uh, on Saturday nights, no telephone rang. And for the very first time, I didn't want to go home for Christmas. Why bother? Well, I did. I did, and I stayed with my dad. And then Christmas came. Christmas morning came. Except I wasn't the first one up anymore. I slept in. Again, why bother getting up? But eventually I did get up, and I, I went down, and I looked, and sure enough, there was a couple of gifts under the tree. And then I picked up one that said, to J.D. from Nan. Well, I ripped it open and inside there was a pair of boots and a Terry's chocolate orange. Once again, my grandmother didn't forget me. Once again, she provided. Well, my best friend's mother was working at Sears back then and later on she would tell me that my grandmother had ordered these things before she went into the hospital. She said she wanted to make sure that I had a good Christmas. 
in case she wasn't there to share it with me. And once again, no matter what was going on, I was in her thoughts. Once again, no matter what was going on, she didn't forget me. And once again, there was a plate of goodies, Terry's chocolate orange, and something special under the tree. Now folks, I don't know if you have stories like that. Maybe you do. But what I can tell you is that a mother's love is a gift that keeps on giving. It's a well that never ever runs dry. And nothing can stop your mother's love from showing up. Maybe it's in a recipe that you still use today to make Christmas special for the people that you love. Maybe it's in a, a pattern that you follow to make socks, you know, to help clothe your family. Maybe it's the skills that you taught you, that she taught you, or, or a word of advice that pops into your mind when you need it the most. Maybe it's in the prayer that she used to say with you and about you. Maybe it's the faith that she helped instill in your heart. Or maybe it's the values and the priorities that you still hold dear. Or maybe, just maybe, it's a pair of words. that helped you continue your journey in life when she couldn't be there to walk with you. My friends, a mother, a grandmother, can only hold your hand for a little while. But her love, it will hold your heart forever. So on this day, my friends, happy Mother's Day. And that's a little message I leave with you here today. Why did God make mothers? What do moms do for us? They clean the house. <laughs> for us. They made us. They made you guys a good one. Cook for us. They cook for us, girls. They well, take care of us. Harrison, what do moms do for you? They take your places? Okay. What ingredients do you think God put in to making mothers? Angel hair. Um, potions. Potions. Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Maybe you could say ropes. What about like sugar cookies? <laughs> uh, sugar. maybe. Harrison? Maybe a Wyatt? Pot Muffins. Muffins? A little bit of meat. I of meat. Kind of meat. What? I have another quick question. Okay. What we're... kind of, so you guys are little kids. What do you think your mother was like when she was your age? Uh, they, they would jump around on the cushions like we would. <laughs> but I don't do that. What do you think your mom was doing when you guys were, uh, when she was your age? Uh, doing bad stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't get trouble with eating the last What about you guys? Santa and Noah? Uh, Noah? Right she read a lot? She read a lot? No. What about you guys, Brooke and Lauren? Having fun? Harrison. Harrison. When mommy was young, what do you think she was doing? I don't know. I don't know. Who, uh, okay, I have another question. Who is the boss at your house? Oh. When my mom's away, my grandpa, but when my grandpa's away, my mom. <laughs> Who's the boss in your guys' house? Dad. Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the boss? Mom. Mom. Who's the boss at your house, Brooke and Lauren? Mom. <laughs> Who's the boss, Harrison? Dad. <laughs> if there was one thing that you could change about your mom, what would it be? Um, I want to change the meanest way. <laughs> Good answer. All right, the boys. Not being mean. That's the same thing. Hannah, Noah. Um, change the decisions about giving me an iPhone 12. <laughs> what? Change decisions about giving me an iPhone 12. Brooke and Lauren, anything you change about your mom? Not to say no, dear. Harrison, is there anything that you would change about mom? Eat all the candy in the whole library. 
<laughs> My friends, the good Lord has given us eyes to see, ears to hear, a mind to understand. He has given us a mouth to praise the Lord. My friends, he has given us our greatest gift, the gift of our mothers. Let us come before God now with the gifts that only we can give. Our offering will now be accepted. There's dust on Mother's old Bible. It's pages torn with pain. And though it's old and wrinkled, Mama's lay on it. The night the angels called her. Mama called me to her side. Said, son, let this be your Bible. Said, son, let this be. It's pages worn with pain, and though it's old and wrinkled, Mama's there on every day. I pick up Mama's old Bible. Tonight I press it oh so tight. I heard Mama whisper softly, I will meet you on the other side. There's dust on Mother's old Bible. It's pages worn with pain, and though it's old and wrinkled, Mama's there on every day. I kiss my mother's old Bible. I wipe away the dust Oh, you'll never know Until she's gone How you miss your mother's love And as we seek to give back to God a small measure of what we received, let us also give back to God the prayer God gave to us to say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <gasps> so bored, I don't know what to do with myself. Yeah. It's cold and rainy out there. Sure, you just wear your sneakers in your t-shirt. Call Martha Stewart. Those throw pillows look way better on the floor. Why'd you make your bed? You're only going to sleep in it again. Just go ahead, wipe it on your sleeve. Just brush your teeth anytime you want. 
You haven't showered in three days? That's okay, I don't smell anything. No, no, don't bother paying the rent. Just move back in. Thanks for cleaning the cat box. I'm drowning in gratitude. Wow, you cleaned your room. God is great, God is good. Let us thank him for our food, amen. Okay, everybody, take out your phones. I'm going to have a shower. Feel free to flush the downstairs toilet. My friends, our scripture reading for today comes from the book of Luke. Luke chapter 2, verses 25 to 35. Now in this particular passage, Mary and Joseph have taken Jesus to the temple in order for him to be dedicated to the Lord. And as they're coming back, they meet a man, a man called Simeon, who has some words that Mary takes to her heart. We hear them. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went to the temple courts. When the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what his custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and he praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what he had said about him. Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. May God bless us our reading and our interpretation of this God's holy word. Amen.
good Lord was creating mothers. He was into a sixth day of overtime when an angel of the Lord appeared to him, Gabriel, and said, Lord, you're doing a lot of fiddling around with this one. And the Lord said, Gabriel, I have to. This thing that I'm going to call a mother needs to be darn near perfect in a very imperfect world. She has to have an iron spirit, yet still be a soft place to follow. She has to be able to remember every single birthday and an anniversary and an event for her entire family and their friends. Time's going to be limited. So she's going to have to live on, on black coffee and leftovers at times. And she has to have a kiss. A kiss that can take away the pain of anything. Anything from a skinned knee to a broken heart. And she's going to have to have six pairs of hands. Well, the angel shook his head and said, six pairs of hands? Yes, Gabriel, six pairs of hands. But you know what? That's not the problem I'm having. It's not the hands that are causing me the troubles. No, says the Lord. It's the three pairs of eyes that a mother has to have. Three pairs of eyes? Why will she need that? Well, says the Lord, one pair of eyes that can see through closed doors. So that whenever she asks her children, you know, what are you doing in there? And they answer, nothing. She's able to look in and see what they're actually doing there. She has to have another set of eyes back here. Back there so she can see what she shouldn't. But sees what she needs to know. And of course, she has to have eyes here. Eyes here. Eyes that can talk. Eyes that can you look at a child when they've messed up, when they've goofed up, when they've disappointed others, when they've disappointed themselves. Eyes that can talk and say, I understand and I love you. Eyes that can talk so words aren't needed. Lord said the angel, go back to bed, rest, start tomorrow. I can't, says the Lord, I can't. I am so close to creating something so near to myself. Already, already, I have someone that can heal herself when she's sick. That can feed a family of six on one pound of hamburger. And, and, can get a nine-year-old to take a bath. Well, Gabriel walks around this thing that, that the Lord is calling a mother. He reaches out and he touches her. He says, Lord, it's too soft. Yes, says the Lord. Yes, soft, but tough. You can't imagine what this mother can endure. Can it think, says the angel? Think, says the Lord. Of course she can. Not only can she think, but she can reason, compromise, and mediate disputes. Well, Gabriel bends over. And Gabriel runs his hand across this mother's cheek. He says, Lord, there's a problem. There's a leak. It's not a leak, says the Lord. It's a thing called a tear. A tear, says Gabriel. What are they for? Well, says the Lord, a tear is something that can show joy, sadness, Disappointment, pain, loneliness, and a tear can show pride as well. A tear can do all of that? Lord, you're a genius. Well, the Lord looks and says, Gabriel, thanks for the compliment. But I didn't put it there. Well, says Gabriel, if you didn't put it there, who did? Who gave this mother tears? Well, my friends, I don't think we need the good Lord himself to answer that one for us, do we? No. We already know the answer. Who put the tears in our mother's eyes? We did. That tear of joy? That was shed for us. 
that was shed for us at the special moments of our lives. That tear was there before we were even born, when our mothers knew and heard that we were coming. That tear was there when we took our first breath in this world, and when she got to hold us for the, in her arms for the very first time, rock us, sing us a lullaby. Those tears of joy, they were shed when we first sat up, when we took those first steps, when we said our first words, especially if those first words were mummy. It was at our baptism. It was there on that very first day of school. It was there when we went to our very first Christmas concert. It was there at our wedding. And it was there when we told her that she was going to become a grandmother. Throughout our entire lives, these tears of joy have been shed for us by our mother. Those tears of joy, we put them there. But you know what? There were tears of sadness as well. Tears of sadness that we gave our mothers. Now those tears were, were shed when we tried so hard, but didn't succeed. When we didn't make the team, when we didn't win that big game, when we didn't come first. Those tears were shed when our puppy didn't come home. And she saw how devastated we were. Those tears were shed when she couldn't fix it and make it better. When she, when she couldn't take the pain that this world offers us away. Those tears were shed when we couldn't see in ourselves the very special person that she could always see and knew was there. Those tears were shed when she realized that we weren't her little boy or little girl anymore. Throughout our entire lives, these tears of sadness have been shed for us by our mothers. These tears of sadness, we put them there. There's also tears of disappointment. And they were shed for us too by our mothers. Now these tears were shed when we first talked back to her. These tears were shed when we smoked that first cigarette, when we took that first drink. These tears were shed when we when we took her love and all the sacrifice that she's made for us when we took them for granted. Those tears were there every time that we lied to her and thought she didn't know. These tears were shed whenever we made those choices that took us away from the straight and narrow and made us a little bit less than what she knew that we could be. These tears of disappointment, they were shed for us. Those tears of disappointment, we put them there. There's also tears of pain. And these tears of pain were shed for us by our mothers. Those tears were shed when we had a run in with the bullies of this world, or when we came home from school teary eyed because somebody had called us names. Those tears were shed when our hearts were breaking, when we were going through. Divorces or breakups when we were devastated. These tears were shed whenever we were sick. When it was something more than she could just kiss away. These tears were shed when we told her that, you know, this is my life and we could do whatever do with it whatever we wanted. These tears were shed whenever she could see the direction that our life choices were taking us, even though we couldn't. These tears were there whenever, whenever we were making the very mistakes that she always warned us about. And these tears were shed when we made the exact same mistakes that she made. These are tears of pain. And these tears of pain were shed for us by our mothers. And who put them there? We did. Then, of course, there's tears of loneliness. Tears of loneliness that were shed for us by our mothers. These tears were shed on our very first day of school. And these exact same tears were shed for us on our very last day of school. 
These tears were shed when that train left for out west and we were on it. These tears were shed for us when she gazed at the empty place at the supper table where we used to sit. And these tears were shed for us when birthdays were missed or went forgotten. And these tears were shed for us as she sat next to a silent telephone. Throughout her life, our mothers shed tears of loneliness for us. And who put them there? We did. And finally, finally, that tear of pride, that tear of pride was shed for us as well. You know, these tears of pride, they were shed for us whenever we tied our shoe for the very first time or, or we rode our bicycle without training wheels for the very first time. That tear was shed for us when we did our very best. Regardless of whether we won or lost, when we did our very best, that tear of pride was shed for us. That tear of pride was shed when we helped without being asked or called without being prompted. That tear of pride was shed on our graduation day, on our wedding day. That tear was shed when we were ever introduced as their daughter or son. And that tear of pride was shed whenever they were introduced as her mom's. That tear was shed when we became fathers and mothers ourselves. My friends, these are the tears of a mother. And all these tears have been shed for us. We put them there. Now folks, when we went through our Bible lesson, we can say that Simeon knew God because he was able to see the Messiah and the baby Jesus. But you know what else we can also say? We can also say that Simeon knew mothers too. We can say that because he said to Mary, it will be like a sword will pierce her soul. Now, he said that to her, not just because Mary was the mother of the Son of God. He said that because Mary was a mother, period. And that is the joy, the sorrow, the pleasure, the pain, and the love of being a mother. At the very beginning of our service, when the light of Christ began to shine to dispel our darkness, we said the word of the day from Ephesians 5, which says, live a life filled with love for others. You know what, folks? That is what a mother does. And for all of you who may be visiting us for the very first time, please know, please know that your mother has prayed for you many times. Some of them right here in this church for you. She has been and always will be a blessing for your life. And for all you mothers who are here today, this morning, or watching on our YouTube service, I just want to say that what you are doing is exceedingly important. And so on this day, on this Mother's Day, before God, before your spouse, before your children, before your friends, before this community of faith, for everyone in this church or watching at home, I just want to say that on this day, we celebrate your courageous choice to be a mother. And we ask, and we ask that God will reveal his love to you in a very special way today. So my friends, on this day, May God bless you richly. And may you have a very, very, very happy Mother's Day. To which I can only say, thanks be to God. And amen. And now let us just bow our minds and hearts just for a quick moment in prayer. And let us pray.
Loving God, today we want to thank you for our mothers. We thank you for the sacrifices our mother made for us, for the late nights spent rocking us to sleep or, or pacing the floor because, uh, well, we were late getting home and they were so worried. We want to thank you for the tears of joy, the tears of sorrow that they shed for us. We want to thank you for the lessons they taught us, the food they cook, which we can never quite make as good, and for all the hugs and kisses they gave us. We thank you for the gift of time that our moms gave us, whether they were, were stay-at-home moms or, or working moms. We were a lot of work, and yet they made time for us. We pray you give each mom strength. She is called on and so much, and sometimes her time, her energy, her patience are stretched so thin that sometimes we wonder how she can do it all. We're not always around to help, and sometimes we just don't know what she needs. But you do. And so we pray that you give each mom strength, the strength that she needs. And Lord, on this day, we especially pray for single moms. Moms who have to be both mother and father. And we thank you. We thank you that your big arms surround each child who may never know their earthly father. We also pray for those women who may never have children of their own, but whose nurturing extends across the threshold to other lives. Lord, we ask you, we ask you to be the daily bread of tired moms. We ask you that, that you can be their living water. And we ask that, that you be their source of spiritual and physical strength. Because they need it. And the people in their care need it. Lord, some of us, our mothers are no longer with us. They now reside with you. And we pray. We pray that our lives and our actions honor their memory and their spirit. We pray that they know that we love them. That we miss them. And that we would give anything to be with them again. And finally, on this day, in which we honor our mothers. And we love and cherish the special women who have borne us, who have nurtured us, who have prayed for us in our well-being. May our hearts overflow with gratitude to you for giving them to us. It is in your name that we pray, Lord. Mother, and may you have a happy and blessed Mother's Day.